Hello, everyone. Ceciliandus here. So, for this, uh, this is going to be Royal Maze Tutorial 2.0. Since now you got a clearer voice for me and better contrast levels here, I'm going to go ahead and make a new recording. So, Royal Maze, because I've had some people ask me about it, Royal Maze is accessible to you after 2.1 in the princess's room. You probably notice that my princess isn't here. That would be story-related reasons. I'd rather not spoil it. So, how Royal Maze works is... Every Saturday, you will get another 15 points of Courage Aug. You get to start with 30. Every floor that you do is going to consume three of those points. Unless, of course, you use a big genie. I'll more on that in a bit. Now, when you first initially start Royal Maze, you will get the story maps. Alright, that's pretty much a tutorial. You're not going to get much loot out of it. It's meant for you to clear through it to see if you can, while leveling your pr hero princess up. So, you can access your princess here, assign her skill points and her equipment, before 5.0, I believe her level cap is 70. But after 5.0, a certain event will happen, and a new Royal Maze will pop up here. A new version of it. And in that particular one, the monsters are going to be harder, your Hero Princess can go up to level 120, and there will be a new mode where I believe the timer will not count down, and you have three paths that you can take. One gives more experience, one gives more gold, and one gives more chests. Obviously, everybody's going to want to go for the chests. So, before I explain other things on this menu further, I'll show you my hero princess. You probably may have noticed that she looks different from yours. That's because this is an outfit from the cash shop I bought for her, since I'll be seeing a lot of her. And I gave her a throwaway, or else my old sword and shield. But I can always upgrade her sword and shield whenever. I probably will later on with a really powerful one, preferably one with magic attack on it, or recovery, since I have her mainly using her magic attacks in the back. Now, the point of this maze is to earn Augite belts and to level up your hero princess. It's also a good way to raise affection for your monster, but for this demonstration, I'm bringing my strongest monster with me. He's level 18, 19, but he's a reincarnation 11. So he's exceptionally powerful, and he's near his maximum. And he's wearing the same equipment my paladin does. In fact, and that's why raising a monster is important. They can help you with certain content. I think we'll keep them on that. There we go. So. I'm going to go in, and I will explain this other stuff on the right at the end of the video. We're going to do two runs. And then after those two runs, you're going to see what I do with the boxes I've collected, so long as I succeed. So now I'm going to consume three Courage Augite. Again, you get 15 of these per week. This is long-term progression content. Very important that you never let your Augite fill over. Because these are very powerful belts. They can be very powerful belts. The War God belts are slightly stronger. They can have a different array of effects on them. But they are much harder to get, and I will make a video of that eventually once I'm able to do the content myself. It the minimum requirement is level 90, but you honestly really got to be level 110 plus in order for anybody to take you in an alliance with them to do it. I may have to try 
this Saturday night and see if I can join some Japanese players to do so. Now, you noticed two of them popped up. If you've just started your Royal Maze, this is probably what you're seeing here. This is the beginner course. This is the tutorial. Okay, you have to get through all of it, this, to get this mode, which gives far more rewards, far better XP and gold. All right, and it's how you access the whole leveling system for your maze. I'll explain that again after the end of two runs. So, we're going to go to Night Forest. Now, the purpose of these runs, at least for this particular mode, is to go through killing enemies as quickly as possible while getting as many chests as you can without your courage running out. If you run out of courage, you lose your augite, you lose your courage, augites, your, your courage stones, you lose any treasure you picked up, you pretty much just get screwed. And of course, the light ruler shows up. Okay, so the light ruler, every, basically a dark skinned genie. Anytime he shows up, he will give you a buff for free and advance you a second floor. So that way you don't have to go one floor by one floor. If you use any of the either of these genies, okay, and accept their gift in exchange for three courage augites you get to advance another floor over. Thus, you have to use up basically less, a lot less time getting to the top floor to get a large bonus of treasure at the end, which I'll show you after this. So he shows up, and when he, this guy shows up, he basically gives you a really nice bonus, and he doesn't charge you anything for it. So you got to get lucky to get him, but the more you level your maze up, the more often he's going to appear. If I was to accept the gift from this guy, let me see what he's offering, and he's going to tell you straight up that he can't be compared to the guy on the left. I don't really care for that, so... I mean, could, if I didn't had him here, and it was the two normal big genies, I would definitely go for the quadruple XP just to help level a princess and my knight up. But it'd be a waste of courage, Augites, since I got him. And regardless, even if both of them were normal genies because I'm on the last floor, I would still not accept anything because it'd be a waste. I wouldn't get the two floors over. I would basically be wasting courage, Augite. So, let's go in. Now, I'm going to speed through this as much as I can, and I will close, open my mic when a special occurrence happens. As you can see there, my Sparks of Courage went down by 20 because I took that box. That is a risk you have to be willing to take. So you have to decide if it's worth the risk or you just ignore it and keep going. Those boxes are pretty much what you're here for. You'll also notice that I can go into the next enemy encounter immediately. It doesn't require you to wait five seconds to initiate the next fight.
Now, as you can see, I took a risk there. So now I gotta decide, is it worth going after that copper box? I'll lose 20 more seconds. Or should I keep going? I really honestly think I should just keep going. Copper box isn't really worth it. I might be able to get there with time to spare, I think I would. But let's just play like it safe for these two runs. Golden enemies tend to have more health, but if you're very powerful, it won't matter. matter I get one anyway so based on the amount of enemies killed you will get a point bonus to your courage thus more time and more courage to use for boxes now from here you have these three usual genies desire is what most people will get you could take all three but they require a purchase, well, a cost of courage to get their buffs. Love Demon is mostly useless. Sometimes he'll have something good. Fusion of Power will often have an attack buff for you of some sort. Feed of Desire may have a run speed increase, decrease how much you would spend on the boxes, and other beneficial stuff. Looks like today he will give a higher chance of enemies dropping boxes. So we'll take that. Might as well take it. So I'm playing a bit of a risky game here. Now we're going to go through. That sound you just heard means that either a mimic box is around or a special enemy. Also, keynote, when you go below 60 seconds and the timer goes red, sparks might appear on your map. These sparks are basically a last-ditch effort to get to the end and finish out. Basically, the game trying to help you. You'll see them appear on your map. If you grab them, they'll give you, like, maybe 20 to 30 seconds onto your timer to help you try to get to the end. You never want to put yourself in that kind of situation.
So, the Dream Avatar is the special mob. So, if you ever hear that sound, it's because of the Dream Avatar. That was my Royal Maze leveling up. Again, I'll explain that later. See, because my timer was getting a bit low, those sparks came up a little earlier than I expected. Approaching the final room. So we will see what the genies offer us right now. Might as well take it, it's the final room. If I took in that big genies thing earlier, I would have gotten a bigger payout, but again, I don't really need it. And there's nothing the Love Genie or the Power Genie will offer that I honestly need. So, since I took that big Dark Genie's blessing, a powerful enemy is going to show up in the form of that. So now, I need both to fight wisely, because this guy can be a bit of a headache. Green Dragon Box. Nice. So, now we exit. 
Now I will show you the end floor. And once you've cleared the end floor, basically the final floor of this particular mode, it resets and puts you all the way back to floor one. Suffice to say, this is not content that's just going to give you the belts so easily. Especially a belt with stats that you want. You're going to have to do this every week. Or just let it stack up and then do it. But really what needs to happen is, once you get to 5.0, a new mode will show up. And any maze levels and any progress you've made will carry on over to that. And you'll be able to make plus 5 belts. I'm not sure if the sealed sand cap is going to increase, because again, I only read all this on the Japanese website in the guide. That's why I know about it. But I am not sure if the amount of sealed sand uh, limiters will increase as well. Since I believe there's 85 effects, and you can only seal about 40 of them. But hey, I'll figure, I'll find out eventually if it does increase its cap, then that'd be great. I'd have a much higher chance of getting the four to five stats that I want on each particular belt. I'll go a little bit more into that after this next run. So. Notice how my treasure level is level 14. Again, I'll explain that in the next run. After the next run. Alright, spend another three Augite. Now this is going to be a boss fight between you, the hero, and your monster, and the three genies. And again, I stress this, I can't stress this enough. Get Monster Master, level it, get a monster pet. Pick your favorite one. I don't have all the books yet, but these are the monsters you can get on Monster Master or item master. You don't have to get three monsters or four like I do, unless you're going to be doing Monster Arena, which is a side content with some benefit to it. But if you just want the one monster, pick your favorite, level it up, make use of it. Now we got the final haul. It tells you straight up, you clear it, it resets itself. Yep, let's go. Final hall is pretty much where you can get the dark orbs you need to plus four your belt. And I assume once I have unlocked the next version of Royal Maze, uh, it's going to have something similar to get the plus five version of the belt. And that, again, that Royal Maze part is going to be more difficult, especially since your hero can level all the way to 120. Now these genies, they're not hard. Honestly, it's more like a victory lap.
Actually leveled up. About time. Why is leveling her up important? Well, ugh, the higher level she is, the better she can help you with this stuff. And then there's, all, of course, all those boss fights where she participates in, and she will always be the level that you got her to. So if she's weak, uh, she ain't gonna be able to help you much. And yep, here's your reward. You get the dark box, which you need to plus four belt. And then the two sky boxes, which will always give you a plus three belt. Then it starts over from floor one. And that is it. So, now I'm going to open my boxes that I've gotten. These boxes can contain useful items, materials you can sell too, and they can also contain the belt. And, of course, monster coins. That's a Sura. Lottery tickets, coupons, stuff like that. World tree leaves. Can always use those. Ah, oh, middle slime coin. Okay. Got to use that. Okay, let's open our silver boxes. The better the box quality, the higher the chance you're going to get a belt, but it can also give better materials and stuff too. Purple orbs, so 5 to 6k gold there. Another slime coin, I can use that for alchemy later, I think. Or just sell it. I think people buy metal slime coins for what, 5, 7k gold apiece. And gold is the grind in this game, guys. Uh, save up your gold, you're gonna need it for endgame equipment eventually. So, this time I got a plus three belt from the silver box. It's pretty lucky for a silver. Another world tree leaf. Okay, let's open up our gold box. Another belt. Sweet. Let's open up our dragon box. Another belt. And our two sky boxes should always give belts. And again, and I'll explain this later, you can get a lot of belts depending on your luck and other factors, and I will tell you in a bit. And of course, worldly dark box, I have to store that since I'm collecting those right now. That gave me an orb. Secret stone. So. First off, the Royal Maze Progress. It'll tell you what floor you're on and what your treasure level is. So, what is treasure level? Basically, as you... Uh, there's a hidden XP system for the maze. I don't know what the level cap is. It's probably very high. Every time you collect a box, you will gain that ex some XP towards the maze. Once you have enough, it will level up. The higher your treasure level, the better the boxes can be, and the more likely you will get Dark Zones, the Dark Genie. Dark Zones are great because when you get a Dark Zone room, or an entire Dark Zone map, Mimics can appear. And what's great about them is they will always drop a Dragon Box, if it is a Dragon Mimic. And after you kill it, another one may spawn. And then after you kill it, another one may spawn and it could keep going and keep going and keep going. Now, the problem with that is uh, you're on a timer still. Uh, one time, I got into the dark room of the second map and I had about 520 seconds. And uh, the first thing that sh appeared to me was a dragon box. That was extremely lucky because what happened then is I killed it, gave me a dragon box, I killed it again, 
it gave me another dragon box. It spawned again, and then it called some friends, some copper boxes, killed it, killed the copper boxes, got a dragon box and two copper boxes. It spawned again, killed it, and, but this time it spawned two gold boxes, so I got two gold boxes out of it too. And then this kept going for another 10 times, and I had about maybe 180 seconds left. And, but I got out of there with, like, 15 dragon boxes, uh, about four, five coppers, three silvers, and eight golds. And after all that, after the aftermath, of course, I had to clear it. And I got additional chests after that. I pretty much came away with about 16 belts. No, more like 19, actually. Yeah, it was about 19 belts. So that was an extremely lucky day for me. And the chances of that happening is based on your treasure level. You also get bonus treasure level if you use one of the dark big genies. If you don't use any, either of the big genies, okay, you get lower XP per box that you pick up. So again, this is a long-term progression thing. Again, I'm not sure how high the treasure level goes. It probably goes beyond 15. It could be 99 for all I know. And I believe it does carry over to Royal Maze Part 2 once you get to 5.0. And again, in 5.0, a new area opens up. What's different about it is it has three paths. One for bigger XP gains, one for bigger gold gains, and one for more tri boxes showing up. One of the key differences that I read about on it, okay, I'm pretty sure the translation was right, your courage does not go down over time. Okay, it just doesn't go down. I'm not sure why they did it that way. Perhaps there is another risk involved. Maybe you might lose courage if you die during it, or a certain monster gets to you. I'd have to find out. But you'll be doing that particular Royal Maze once you've unlocked it, since that is... it's going to have more chests, better chests, and you'll be able to get Augite plus five belts. Well, you'll obviously get plus four or plus three belts, and there's another item that you get. So you use the stone for the plus four, and then whatever the item is to make it plus five. And I'm hoping the Sealed Sand cap will increase as well. So, Sealed Sand. To get Sealed Sand, you have to sacrifice belts. For example, the Charm Guard is nice, but the other things are useless to me, so... Get rid of that. You get three sand. If it's a plus three belt, you get three sand in the stock. That's no good to me either. Oop. could have a niche use, honestly, but for me, I'd rather go for stats that will work all around, or resistances of some sort. So, I'll take this out. Ascension down attack, I don't like that chance stuff. So now, I can seal effects. I got 27 sands. No, wait, sorry. 31 sands, but I've sealed 18 effects already, so the next seal effect is going to take 19 sands. Since I don't play a caster, I've sealed that, and since MP... I mean, you can always suck down a pot or have a MP generator do that for you. I sealed that, too. Movement speed is always nice, and I'm hoping I can get a belt that has movement speed on it. So, what do I take out first? I've started with the battle start chances, because that's useless. They're all buffs that you can put on, get put on yourself, and then what? They only last for a while long. Anyway. 
Don't need magical book attack. So that's sealed. Now what it means, we seal them, means that uh, they will not appear on the belt, ever. So once you have all 40 sealed effects of all the things that you really just don't want the most, then that just leaves the rest of the things that could be a benefit to you or might be a light benefit to you or no benefit at all. Again, there's a lot of effects here, a lot of different enhancements. enchantments. I'm hoping that sealed effect cap goes up with the next version of Royal Mains. Also, this is similar to the evil Dark God Palace with the War God belts. It has the same kind of progression system concerning sealed effects. So what happens when you have all the sealed effects that you need, all 4040? Well, you can then just get Augite. Uh, of course. So, when you sacrifice a belt, it can be any belt, plus one, plus two, plus three, or even plus four, it will give you one Courage and one Courage Augite only. You're only going to be doing this once you have all sealed effects, all basically all the sealed effects sealed. All right. And now you're just trying to farm for a perfect belt. And with, if you manage to get the highest treasure level by that time as well, okay, chances are, depending on your luck, you could just farm the Royal Maze almost infinitely by just sacrificing belts that you don't need to be able to get more courage og, og, and then you just keep going in and keep going and keep going and hoping that every time you run it, you get at least, on average, six belts a run or at least three belts a run if you use no genie, giant genie buffs. Essentially, this is important content. Everybody should be doing this because these belts provide a lot of benefits. My recommendation on a belt, especially for us North American players who are not on the West Coast, thus we have that 250 to 300 millisecond ping, get a belt that has movement speed on it, at least 3% or more. And then at end game, get boots that has 3% movement speed or more on it. And because I will tell you what, uh, a lot of monster attacks that we can avoid, we have a disadvantage on the East Coast and in Western Europe because of our latency. Because the client sees that we, it's just like Final Fantasy, anybody who plays Final Fantasy 14, the client sees that we are out of the way, but the server doesn't see it that way. With more movement speed, okay, you can make damn sure that you're going to get out of the way. A minimum of at least 9% movement speed would be ideal if you can manage to get it in some ways. Anyways, that is the Royal Maze 2.0 tutorial. I will see you guys next tutorial. I gotta go clear my pyramid before the reset tomorrow. Happy questing.